Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how can I protect my personal data. January 28th is Data Privacy Month, or actually day. How can a day be a month? But anyway, the 28th of January every year is Data Privacy Day, a day that's designed to help you become more aware about how you're going to protect your personal data on the web. As you know, your data can be floating around in a lot of different places, and it's important that you make sure that you are protecting your data. Nowadays, cybercrime is a human problem, which means that criminals are actually using social engineering attacks to attack you rather than trying to hack in and break your devices. Humans are always the weakest link when it comes to protecting their data. That's why criminals are targeting you. So in order to stay safe, one of the methods that you need to use is ensuring that your data is safe and secure. And so there's several areas that you need to look into in order to make sure you are safe. So let's take it away. So the first tip or the first thing that you definitely want to do is to make sure that you know your rights when it comes to your data. There, especially in California, there are laws that are designed to allow you to inquire as to what companies are actually doing with that data that they store. One of the methods that companies try to cover their butts is the terms of service. How often are you going to read those? Not often, but you can get a gist of it by either asking around to different tech authorities like myself and find out what companies are doing with your data. Now, in most instances, social media, media, and just generally, I would say big box stores are going to take your data and they're going to use it as a side hustle in order to make more money. So inquire where your data is and know your rights when it concerns your data. Now, my next suggestion is probably going to shock you because a lot of times I talk about this and there's really no worry about these items called cookies. Clear your cookies. It's a good idea because what criminals do, I shouldn't say criminals. Let's say big tech companies or various websites will scan the cookies in your browser. It's not always criminal, so keep that in mind. And they will look at that information or they can gather that information to see where you've been on the web. I think everyone's familiar by now of all the targeted ads that you see on social media. Ones that particularly are in sync with websites you've previously visited. So if you clear your cookies, it would be a great idea to help prevent big tech and other companies from finding out where you've been on the web. Another thing that you can do is that you can go in incognito mode and you can block those cookies. You can also surf in, in private mode, I think in Microsoft Edge, but incognito is for Google, all you need to do is to go to file or menu and create a new private or in private or a new incognito browser. And that will allow you to keep your cookies to yourself and it won't share those cookies with those snooping browsers. Another thing that you can do if you don't feel like clicking your or clearing out your cookies all the time is to use privacy browsers. Now, believe it or not, websites like or web browsers like Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge are owned by big tech companies. Both are free, but both have the dual job of making sure to go through into your search history or your browser history and report back what they find. And it's even in the terms of service that they're going to do this. So make sure that if you are tired of clearing out cookies, 
that you just use a privacy browser. And what browsers are privacy? Well, there's Brave, and there's Tor, and there's even Opera, and there's one more, Firefox. Those browsers are designed to help keep your information safe and out of the prying hands of those big tech companies. Not only are there privacy web browsers, there are also privacy search engines because search engines like Bing and Google, not Chrome, just Google, will actually scan your browsing history as well. So if you use a privacy search engine such as DuckGut, oh, I almost said DuckGutGut. <laughs> duck duck go then you can ensure that your information is going to be safe and secure when you're using a privacy search engine because believe it or not search engines are always looking to see what you are searching for they don't necessarily know your address but at the same time they can kind of get an idea of where you are searching from and if they look at your history they can kind of figure out who you are so keep that in mind. Next tip is to stop using passwords. I don't necessarily mean that in general. I just mean quit that age old practice of using passwords. Get into the practice of using passphrases. Now passphrases are, uh, uh, almost said unrelated, but they're actually two or more, be three or four, unrelated words that create a strong password. So my favorite one that I always throws out, throw out is stinky chicken. But you can also use the passphrase of purple microphone. Might not want to use blue microphone because that would equal a Yeti. Maybe purple rock, green rock that has moss. But you get the gist of passphrases. They're more secure. And they're easier to remember if you come up with two unrelated words in standard passwords. Problem with passwords is that you're always tying to things that are personal to you, like grandma or like phone numbers to or numbers to your old address, kids' names, nephews, you name it. Things that you're posting on social media and don't think those criminals aren't looking at social media. So keep that in mind when you create your passwords. Up for passphrases instead. Now, another strong tip that I would recommend would be enable two-factor authentication with your online accounts. Two-factor authentication means that you have to verify that it is you twice before you log into a website. The first time with your password, the second time with you responding to a verification notice that's sent to either your email or to your smartphone via text message. With two-factor authentication, even if a criminal gets access to your passwords, they definitely won't be able to log into your online account unless they're able to verify using that second form of authentication. My next tip is to make sure you're being aware of your smart devices. My Echo device sitting off to my right here is constantly listening to listening to what I do. The challenge is, is most of the things that I say around my Amazon device are not personal stuff. Usually just tech tips as I record them in my office live. But your smart devices like your smartphone, which I do have, and your smart home devices like Google and, and Echo, Amazon, Echo, and I want to say the awake word, are listening to your words. Now there's a way that you can log into your Google or Amazon account and turn off the fact that they are saving this information to your Google and Amazon accounts. Not so much with your iPhone, or maybe you can. But anyway, the main thing is, is be careful what you say around your smart devices. So that way you're not giving up precious secrets or accidentally sharing stuff that you don't want shared. Now, finally, this should be common sense, but be careful what you share online because you never know when a criminal or a stalker is looking at your personal information. So when you're posting on social media, 
make sure that you're being careful what you're saying uh, so that you're not giving out too much personal information where a criminal can either build a second identity to you or get a good idea of who exactly you are and where you are located. One of my last tips would be to check to see if your information has been leaked onto the dark web. It's very important because you never know when a um, prim when a company that you work with has had their information leaked out and you it makes you more susceptible to criminals. So the best way to do that is to go to my favorite website, haveibeenpwned.com, if I can bring it up. You can definitely put in your email or phone information or even check out if your passwords have been are weak and have been pwned and use this website to as a first defense to make sure that if companies have been breached that you'll know about it and that you can take steps to protect yourself. For example, the main things that you should protect yourself from as far as your data would be your first name, your last name, your addresses, social security numbers, phone numbers, all that information needs to be safe and secure. Same thing with your financial information. You need to keep that safe, such as bank routing numbers and credit card numbers. Any of those pieces of information can lead a criminal from getting access to your stuff. So make sure that you're always aware and make sure that you stay on top of data breaches by going to haveibeenpwned.com. Now, as always, if you've got comments or questions about how to keep your data safe, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you to find out what ways I can help you protect your data. Now, with every video, I always ask, if you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video with all your friends and family because I know you know somebody out there that needs tech help. I love technology. I've read all the manuals, and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching.